So we've previously talked about how amazing tile maps are for quickly making 2D levels in Unity. But of course, tile maps are only useful if you want everything to be on a fixed grid. Now, sprite shapes, on the other hand, are set up in a very similar way to tile maps. But instead of placing tiles on a grid, the sprites will stretch and tile in order to follow a path. This makes it super easy to create curves and more organic feeling objects. As of making this video, sprite shape is still in preview, so features are still being moved around and added. But it's definitely usable. So let's have a look at how to start using it. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 23,000 quality classes on game development, tech, and more. If, for example, you want to make your own card game in Unity, I really recommend you check out this awesome course on developing trading card battle systems. This guide is made by Vladimir Limachin and teaches you everything from making your own card faces to implementing your cards in battle. A Skillshare membership gives you unlimited access to all classes for less than $10 a month. So to get started, simply click the link in the description and the first 500 people will receive their first two months for free. Now, to take advantage of sprite shape, we of course need some nice sprites that are set up in the right way. These are the sprites that I will be using in this video. You can download them using the link in the description. They are made by the awesome Mort Mort, who has a YouTube channel on creating beautiful pixel art. So if you want to learn how to create your own pixel art sprites, definitely check that out. In fact, he's made a video on creating this exact sprite sheet. All right, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is of course to install sprite shape. And it's currently available in a preview version using the package manager. So let's go window and open up the package manager. Let's go under all and find the 2D sprite shape package. And here we can simply hit install. And that is all we need to do. We can now use sprite shape in our project. Now I've already gone ahead and imported the sprites that we're going to be using in this video. I've made sure to select all of them and set the pixels per unit to 16, the filter mode to point because we're using pixel art. And I've also removed any kind of compression. And the first type of sprite shape that we're going to be creating is an open ended shape. Now open-ended shapes are great for stuff like flat platforms. And creating these are super simple. If I just take my platform sprite here, you can see that it's just one unified sprite. There's no need to split it up into individual tiles using this system. And I'll show you why in a sec. But for now, let's start by creating a sprite shape profile. And we do this inside of the project window. Let's hit create, go under sprite shape profile. And let's start by creating a strip profile. We'll name this profile something like flat platform. And now we can see a bunch of different settings in our inspector here. But when creating an open-ended shape, there's not a lot of this that we need to adjust. In fact, for now, we can just get away with adding our sprite. So let's hit the plus sign under sprites and let's drag in our platform. And we can see the sprite now gets displayed here. Now with this profile selected, we can go to the hierarchy and hit create 2D object sprite shape. And we've now created a sprite shape object based on a flat platform profile. You can always change the profile over here. And what this means is that we're actually ready to start editing our path. To do this, we go to the right and hit edit spline. And you can see that we now have these two points that we can drag out in any way that we'd like to. You'll also notice that as soon as we do that, our platform starts tiling. And it doesn't do so in a very pretty way. It simply repeats the entire platform one after another. And that's not really what we want. Instead, we would like to see that we have the end of the platform here. Then it simply repeats the middle part. And then we have another end of the platform at the end. To set this up, we simply stop editing the spline. We go select our platform sprite. And let's open up the sprite editor. And in here, we can use the sprite editor to define the ends of our platform as well as the middle part. And doing this is super easy. We simply adjust the left and right side of our border. So I'm going to set this to something like 5 down here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the right side. And now we can see that we've separated the ends of our platform from the center. If we apply this and go back into Unity, we can see that immediately our platform tiles really nicely. And if we go in and edit the sprite shape again, we can add more points. If we simply press on the middle here and drag out, we've now added a sharp corner point. We can see that here the point mode is currently a sharp point where we go in a straight line from point to point. We can also edit this to change it into a curve. And here we can adjust the tangents to make it much smoother and nicer. And if you don't want the tangents to be mirrored, we can choose the last mode here where we can adjust the smoothness of each side individually. But I simply want a smooth curve here, so I'm going to select that. And let me just draw out a quick shape. There we go. So you can really see how easy it is to create your own shapes inside of the editor. Now we can stop editing the spline. And at this point, we can use it like any other object. We can move it around, we can scale it and rotate it. However, of course, one thing that we probably want to do is add a collider to our platform. 
And doing this is actually super simple. We simply hit add component and search for edge collider 2D. And then inside of our sprite shape controller, we can go under collider and select update collider. And right away, we can see that our green line snaps right into place. However, of course, it's currently in the center of our platform and we want to be able to stand on top of it. So to change this, we can adjust the offset of our collider. I'm going to bump this up and that actually looks pretty decent. We can also change the corner type to something like round. And there we go. We now have a collider for our platform. In fact, if we were to just add some kind of rigid body into a scene, I've gone ahead and created a ball here that has a circle collider as well as a rigid body and hit play. We can see that it works just fine. Awesome. So that is how you can use open ended shapes to create simple flat platforms. But what if we wanted to create close ended objects that doesn't just allow us to create lines, but actually close ended shapes. I mean, this is fine for platforms, but what if we wanted to create larger ground elements? Now to do this, we need to create another profile. So inside of our project, we'll go create sprite shape profile. And this time I want to start with an empty profile. Let's name it something like ground. And you can see that we get all of these same settings. However, this time we don't have a predefined range. Now, ranges basically just allow us to define what sprites we want to show when facing in what direction. And for our first profile here, we can see that we just have one large range that goes around in the entire circle. So we always show the same sprite. However, for our ground, we probably want to have some grass at the top, some dirt on the sides, some different kind of dirt at the bottom. So to do this, we actually need to create four ranges. In order to create a range, we of course hit create range and we then choose the start and end points of our range. I'm going to start this off at 45 and end it at negative 45. So this makes a 90 degree range. I'm going to create another 90 degree range right after that, simply by pressing. So that goes from negative 45 to negative 135. I'm going to keep pressing here, just controlling the numbers to make sure they're okay. Now you can see that we've created four different ranges. And as we adjust this marker and go around, we can add sprites for each one of them. So at the top here, I'm going to add a simple top sprite. And this is just some grass and some dirt. I'm going to be using tile 2 for this. And as you can see, that looks just fine. Then when we get to the right hand side here, I want to be using another sprite. So I'm going to hit plus. And this is where sprite shape is a bit different than normal tile maps. Because my instinct originally was to create a sprite that faced to the right. But we actually don't want to do that for sprite shapes. Instead, we actually still want to create a sprite that faces upwards. As you can see here, that's what we've done. And the reason for this is that we don't need to rotate it. Sprite shape is going to rotate it for us. In fact, we can see that happening in this wheel. Sprite shape is just constantly rotating our sprite. So for the right one here, we simply need to choose tile 7. And we can see now that it looks great. For the bottom tile, we are going to add another one. And this is going to be tile 10. Again, this isn't made to point downwards. It still points upwards, but it looks different. And finally, for the left-hand side here, I'm going to add in tile 5. So now we can see that this sprite will change accordingly as we go round. And just to show you this in action, let's try and create a sprite shape object based on this profile. So let's select it. Let's go to the hierarchy and hit create. Let's select 2D object and sprite shape. And you'll notice that it detects that we have multiple sprites in here and therefore it's gone ahead and disabled open ended. But if it hasn't done so, you can always make sure to check that box. And right away we can see the effect of our changes. If we go in and edit the spline here, no matter what we do, it's always going to display the appropriate sprite depending on which direction the sprite is facing. Pretty cool. Of course, there's still some stuff lacking. Mainly we don't have any corners and the inside of our shape is completely empty. To fix this, let's select our ground profile and let's start by adding a fill. Of course, we've created a tile for this as well. This is tile 6. However, we can see right away that looks pretty weird. The reason for that is that we need to make sure to select the tile that we want to use as fill and set the wrap mode to repeat. If we apply that, it already looks better. However, it's currently tiling way too closely. So let's go in here and set the pixels per unit to 16 here as well. And now we can see that we have a nice fill on our tile. The last thing that we need to do is add in corners. And these are simply defined as separate sprites. So for the outer top left corner, I'm going to select tile 1 here. For the outer top right corner, I'm going to select tile 3. For the bottom left corner, I'm going to select tile 9. And for bottom right, I'm going to select tile 11. Now, these are currently not showing up in our sprite shape. And this is one of those things that confused me at first. But that's because we have the opportunity to go in and define what points we want to act as corners. So if we edit the spline here, we can select one of the points 
And now we get to choose what to do with the corner. We can either choose disabled or automatic. And you can see as soon as we choose automatic, the corner snaps right into place. Let's do this for all of the points. And voila, we now have a really nice looking ground element. So let's stop editing the spline here. Let's move up our object so we can see everything clearly. And there you go, that's my introduction to sprite shapes. From here it's up to you to create your own custom sprites to play around with and just have fun shaping your own levels. It's a really creative and fun tool to use. I do also think that there is a lot of stuff that could be improved here. I think the UI is a bit cluttered. I think some of the ways that you set up your profiles is a bit overly complicated and generally could just use a tiny bit of tidying up. But it is still in preview so we have to cut the developers some slack and it is already a really great tool. In fact, there's still stuff that you can do with this that I haven't shown you. For example, you can easily add variations if you don't want to just be tiling the same tile over and over. And there's actually also an API you can use to script your own custom behavior. If you want to learn more about those things, I'll of course have a link in the description. Awesome. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also make sure to check out Skillshare, simply click the link in the description to get started. And if you haven't already joined our Discord, definitely make sure to do so. There's a lot of really exciting stuff happening there at the moment. The community is hosting a bunch of events and it's just a really fun place to hang out. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in September and a special thanks to Andrew Kalinenko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Simmer IO, Alexander Blair, Cheetah 3D, Jeff Johnson, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Sheriff Abdullah, Fizzle Marify, Fang So Long, Leo Lasset, Vincent Van Skewer, Swears D, Derek Heemskirk, Ronan, Tim of Holderbach, Bruins Cat, Naoki Uwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Pakum Benia, Erasmus, Robert Bund, Corey Jackson, James P, Anthony Patton, Kyo Swedeski, and Abrisi. You guys rock.